This is the Everyone Podcast with Adam and Luke. As we talk everything Formula One motor racing. G'day and welcome to Effing One Podcast, Australia's only Formula One podcast. And it's nice to be back after a small hiatus, some Renaults, some screaming babies, and permission from the missus. <laughs> uh, Hungary. Well, that saw Lewis Douche, just recapping, Lewis Douche Canoe uh, extending his championship lead, taking the win with Sebastian Fingerboy Vettel second, Kimi Team Orders third. Um, new nicknames. New nicknames, that's what we need. Um, we've got some for you. Uh, Dan, the personality, picked up some uh, very valuable points. Coming in fourth, uh, Valtteri, no idea how to overtake Bottas. There's another good nickname. Mm. Fifth, uh, a great drive from Pierre Gasly, the gas man. Sixth, I think that was his best result. Anyway, we'll find out more from the expert in a second. Kevin, shark my balls, Magnussen, seventh. Uh, have you having a great season? Fernando, I'm out of here, Alonso. Another good nickname for him. Eighth. Carlos, I wish I was Alonso, Science, ninth, and Roman Grosjean, and on and on and on and on. Please just move on and on. It's uh, tenth place for him. There was a lot of action in Hungary, including, of course, Mad Max going ballistic, spitting the dummy uh, like a teenage potty mouth that he is. Um, what a highlight that was. To tell us more, we need to turn to the man that spent the last three weeks in F1 rehab. He just got released this morning, and already he's straight on the bottle, sucking the teat of Formula One. He's drunk, he's high on it, baby. Um, by the way, Luke, welcome, and love the Belgium waffle outfit that you're wearing. <laughs> is that what that is? Let me it taste is. it. Let me taste it. No, no, keep it. Oh, that's definitely a Belgium. Like that's Sebastian a Vettel all over again. <laughs> That's real Belgian waffle. It's delicious. And yes, this is a Belgium chocolate bar, in case you're wondering. <laughs> you really thought that through, didn't you? <laughs> I really did. I put a lot of time into this, Luke. You know my intros. Three weeks. You know my intros. <laughs> have a lot of research. As is the tradition here at Effing One Podcast, we um, have to wear the native costumes of the featured race. And post-race, course- I could wear some Fritz. Oh, some nice. Belgian fries. Yes, and just natural mayonnaise. <laughs> We'll just dip that in there. What? <laughs> you went there. Now, before we talk about uh, Belgium, the next race, we need to talk about Hungary. When can was you, that? Can you think back to Hungary? Can you think way back that far? Oh, yeah. Can you give us a little rundown? Give me some highlights of the Hungary Grand Prix, Luke. Well, the highlights. Was there any? Yes, there was. Daniel Ricciardo came from well back. Um, got knocked about a bit yep. in, in the first couple of corners. Um, so did Charles Leclerc, which he ended his race early, and then he made his way up, all the way up through the field. Good to and, watch, and wasn't it? Finished a He's good back, fourth. baby. Dan's back. He's back. He's overtaking. It's, it's what he needed. He needed that before yeah. the summer break. Yeah. He, 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 after a, a tough couple of races, it was good that he had a chance to get his elbows out, push people around. Yeah. Bottas tried to really push him around. Uh, but that didn't quite work out. Great result for Gasly and Toro Rosso getting sixth place. He drove really well all weekend. Um, yeah, there wasn't too much else to speak of. It was status quo up the front. There wasn't too much fighting or overtaking. Um, Lewis dominated 17 seconds ahead, three seconds back to Kimi Raikkonen from Seb, and then Ricardo was another 26 seconds behind. V- Valtteri Bottas' tyres went off. and Yep. That was pretty much... It seemed like Ferrari probably should have done a better job. It seemed like the tactics probably weren't right with Sebastian. Uh, I think They've was, had a superior car. It seems like there was a faster car in practice. I think it was the rain. The rain in quali just yep. kind of threw them out and Hamilton got the pole and tough place to overtake. Yep. And uh, I think Ferrari was the quickest car um, all weekend. Yep. But for that wet quali, Lewis is good in the rain. The um, Max was saying that the that the Red Bull is terrible in the wet, which is unlike every other Red Bull that yeah. he's driven or that that we've known. Yeah, we expected Red Bull to be relishing the wet, but this year's car just different isn't beast handling it. Mm. So that's surprising, and surprising that Williams was uh, sorry. Um, Maybe it's too stiff because you need a little bit of a softer softer car when it yeah. comes to the rain. Okay, Maybe it doesn't have that. There you so, go. Yeah. So, Ricardo still got the fastest lap of the race. Yep. 
with a one minute. He does love point. a good fastest lap of the race, he does. doesn't he? Yeah. And Sebastian tried to beat it on the final lap. Nice but try. He didn't. Nice try. That's why you'll be number two. I'm going to guess that Dan's got the most fastest laps out of all drivers. Would I be right in that guess? Then? You are correct. Is Daniel right? Ricciardo has four fastest laps. Valtteri, I don't know how to overtake wingman Bottas. <laughs> He's got three fastest laps. That's surprising. Mm. Uh, Max Verstappen has two. Kimi Raikkonen, one. Seb and Lewis also on one. Fastest pit stops since we're in this. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Red Bull's got four. Sauber, three. Ferrari, two. Williams, two. Mercedes, one. That's for the entire season so far. Yep, that's Red the Bull fastest pit stops. winning that as well. Looking yep. good. Let's have a look at the championship lead. Championship lead is the douche canoe Hamilton. Um, God Complex, you name it. Yeah. He's... Oh, yeah. God love he, him. He just released a, a new... Oh, good. I can't wait to pick it up on iTunes. Mm, no, it's not an album. Oh. No, it's no. he's actually made a clothing, clothing line, line with Tommy Hilfiger. Finally. Fi- is it a little lycro? If, if Tommy Hilfiger picked up Sebastian Vettel, it could be Tommy Hilfiger. Oh. For the finger boy. There you go. See, what, but it's not. That's different. Yeah. And he, he looks like a, basically an orange McLaren jumpsuit. Nice. It looks horrible. Yeah. But pretty much everything else he wears is horrible. Matches the hairdo. So he should he should just stick to wearing his overalls. I think that's the most sensible thing he wears all year. Yeah. He's on 213 points, well ahead of Sebastian Vettel on 189. Kimi Raikkonen, 146. Bottas, 132. Ricardo 118. Verstappen, after his DNF and uh, some swears leading to the Renault garage, uh, 100. Five points. Hulkenberg in the B Championship yep. in lead on 52. Magnussen, 45. Alonso, 44. Good little battle between those three. Perez, Sainz, 30 points each. Ocon, 29. The Gash Man, 26. Grosjean and on with, I think, two point scoring races. It's 21. Yep. Leclerc, 13. Van Dorn on eight. Ericsson, five. Stroll, for Hartley, two, and Sergei Sorokin still on nil point. Oh, will he be there next year? I don't Good know. Question. Depends how much money he's got. Because he Williams is some... going to need some money. Yeah, they've lost a lot of money. I mean, we'll get into that shortly. So let's talk about the driver market, um, the seats for 2019 shortly. But let's get into before we disappear from Hungary, let's continue with some awards, awards for Hungary. How about the Green Award for the smallest carbon footprint? Luke, who did you dish that out to this week? Green Award goes to Red Bull Racing with Daniel Ricciardo not in Q3 and a Max Verstappen early retirement. Perfect. And a whole lot of potty language. Mm. He was not Spent happy. to the naughty corner. It's strange that when he has a... An engine that blows up. How Red Bull gets behind mm. Max, and when Dan, there's mm. very little, little uh, effort to back him up. Anyway, I don't think they can do much. It's it's out of their hands. That's true. And Dan's not. He's he hasn't got a problem with Renault anymore. Anyway, so he's quite happy. <laughs> um, time for the UGE Day awards. Well, that goes to the poor Monegasque Charles Leclerc. Oh, he's had such a great run. Little- Ding dong battle, um, in at the start of the race, uh, he got squeezed between two cars, broke something on his car, and that was the end of his race. So why did you turn up, Charles Leclerc? Why? What Bad a, way to end just before the uh, season break, but he's been strong, and hopefully his good performances continue from this weekend. He's a talent, mm. and the time for the Pastor Maldonado Award for Dangerous Driving, Luke. Who is going to kill someone out there? That was pretty easy one to, to go with. That was Valtteri Bottas with his uh, little pushing on Sebastian Vettel, nearly locking up and hitting the inside of him. Yes. He did hit his rear left. I don't know how Vettel didn't get a puncture. And then he drove right into the side of Ricardo. And, he did. And what what I found hilarious about that situation was he he's he's like he should have known that I had damage on my on my front wing. That's right. He blamed he, Dan he for running into He shouldn't Dan. try and overtake me on the outside. I'm not going to go that easy. I'm like, um you're the one with the damaged car, mate. You should know the length and breadth and how far you can break with a car that has damaged aero. Yeah. And it's no one else's fault but your own and that's why you got penalized. I don't know yeah, how can you can we, possibly blame yeah. someone else. It's it's funny because does he go to 
the French Grand Prix where he was hit into by Sebastian. Mm. And does Sebastian go, Bottas shouldn't be the, on the outside yeah, of that's me. that's your fault. I really want that corner. Yeah. Mm, no, champ. No. No. If you run into the side, like if you overestimate your talent and ability in a broken car, that's your fault. It's on you, Valtteri. Yep. That's why you're the wingman. Yep. Uh, laughable, Bottas. Nice try. But you put no a one... big dent in the side of your car yeah. and a big dent in the side of Daniel's car. Yeah, yeah. You're not fooling anyone, mate. No. You can't overtake and you really have no excuses for being so rubbish. Yeah. Uh, Look at Sanded Awards. Who Lickett did the best overtaking manoeuvre? Well, it was Daniel Ricciardo, of course. Yes, of course it was. It was either on Kevin Magnussen or his move on Van Dorn. Yep. I think the move around the outside of Magnussen into turn two. The left hand, he went around the outside, carried the speed around the corner with superior grip and, and got Magnuson Magnussen defended really well, so did Van Dorn. Um, I think a lot of the overtakes Daniel made, some were like with Hulkenberg and a few others. It's like, yeah, you can have it. Gas was like, yeah, you can have it. But some, Ricardo took him by surprise. Like, hey, he's not far. Like, he's too far away. We'll mm. just wait a couple, uh, the next corner. And uh, he stuck it, made it happen and didn't lock up. So... Good drive, a lot of confidence for him going into the summer break. He's been training like a madman, which is good to see. He's looking fit. Looking good. He, um, he's with... feeling good as well. Mm. He's pumped. New yep. contract. Yep. Everything's going well. I just wonder how the back end of the season is going to go for him. Mm. Can't imagine he get too many favours from his new team. <laughs> uh, let's get into that in a moment because we're still talking about driver of the day for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Who just select uh, as your winner? Well, the FM1 Podcast Award went to Daniel Ricciardo. Yes. For his superior drive. Not that we're biased in any sense. No. Someone who came from the back of the grid at the Hungarian Grand Prix where they say he can't overtake. Daniel did a great job. Made some spots up and then uh, executed a few good moves. Driver of the day for... Under the F1 website was Daniel Ricciardo, fastest lap Daniel Ricciardo, and fastest pit stop was the Williams with a 2.10 for Sergei Sorokin's pit stop. And our predictions? Oh, yes. Let's look at the... You're still four up. So, status quo. So, you were were four up? Stayed four up. Yep. We... You had a a win with Sebastian. Um, I think I had Kimi out qualifying, and then you got Sebastian in the race. You chose Magnuson. I chose Gasly. It's a nice buffer, Luke, mm, at half four. time. We're at halfway through the season. Mm. I got a four, though it can change pretty quick. Oh, it will change. It, it will. will change this weekend. We'll soon I don't see. know which way it's going to change. We'll soon see. But it's going to change. And we'll have some predictions in a minute. Uh, should we Skype call Sebastian? We should. See what he's been up to? Yeah. Because I wonder what he's been doing the last mm. three I'm also weeks. interested to in know what Sebastian's been yeah. up to. Yeah. Because yeah. I haven't heard from him and. It's, it's a long been, time for you not to hear from yeah, Sebastian. Yeah, I'm a bit... I missed him, actually. Did you really? Yeah. Because normally he kind of freaks you out a bit. He does, but it's been a while, water under the bridge and all that. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Well, um, Sebastian is a big fan of the Effing One podcast. He never just, seems to remember our name or cuts me off before. Oh, he doesn't seem to care. No. No, he just, he's just got the hots for me, really. I yeah. can blame him. It's weird. If I had hair, I'd flick it. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah. But hey... Mate, Sebastian's got some weird, he's got a weird thing for bald guys, so mm. that's cool. Um, okay, well, let's, should we try to patch him in? Should we try to Skype him and yeah. see where he is? Okay, mm. let's call him up. Hi! Hi, oh. guys! Hi, Sebastian, can you see me? Hi, Lukey! Hi, can you see me? How, I'm, how I'm on the computer screen. Yeah. Hi, look, I've got some banana drink and some little hors d'oeuvre things. I'm sitting on the beach, look. Which beach are you at? I'm down in the one down at... Um, down in the Caribbean. It's really nice down here. It's just super duper. I was a bit concerned you were about to say Main Beach. Yeah, no. Is that where <laughs> you might look? Coast. No, no, no. Because I'm down at the other end of oh, the Gold Coast. Oh, because every You're time the I... Caribbean. Oh, yeah, it's the Caribbean. Yeah, the Caribbean. I thought you lived in the Caribbean. Oh, no, Jesus Christ. No, that's just my skin color. But you look fantastic. Look at Jesus Christ. You lost some weight. You look you, awesome. You look relaxed. I'm so relaxed. Look, you have no idea. Jesus. What have you been doing in the, off- in, in the summer break? Oh, just, uh, you know, relaxing, getting the foot massage mm. and the back massage, the back sack and crack, uh, just mm. the bleach. Mm. Have you tried the anal bleach? No, I haven't. The anus? No, you should try such. So, look, have a, take a look. Let me just show you. Hang on. Let me put my pants down. Look, can you still see me? No, I've got my head between my legs. No, you're, you're holding the camera too low or high or just... just oh. No, I missed it. That's okay. 
I missed it. You probably missed it because it looks exactly like the rest of me now. It's just nice and nice and light color. I actually thought you were pointing out to the sunrise. Yes, it kind of looks like a sunrise now. It has a little sunrise. Quite bright. Let's stop. Hey, please look. This is embarrassing. Jesus, stop talking about my anus. (laughs) Let's talk about the racing. What is wrong with you? You seem obsessed. Well. So, look, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. I'm happy with the contract and my teammates. I'm pretty confident that... Do you know who your teammate is? Are you going to give me an exclusive right now on the Effing One podcast? Let's just say, I can probably safely say that I have a nice, groovy wingman by my side, okay? Bottas? No, no, not that one. Not Bottas, he's shit. No, he's terrible. (laughs) He is a bit shit. The other shit one, the other shit Finn. Oh, the other shit Finn. Yeah, he's... um, I'm pretty confident that the news will be released soon. Oh, yeah, it's top secret. Don't tell anyone. Okay. I won't tell anyone. We... Hey, by the way, <laughs> no one listens to this podcast anyway. What's this podcast called? What's this podcast called that you're doing right now? It's I the... don't care. I don't care. Look, don't even tell me. So I'm sure no one's listening, so I can tell you. I'll be honest with you. It's Kimi Vaikanen, okay? Kimi Vaikanen. Kimi Vaikanen. Mm. Yeah, he's such a great teammate. He's my favorite teammate of mm. all time. Dan, my least favorite. Mm. He's too fast. You heard it here first, folks. But, um, yeah, pretty happy. Gee, Dan, with some crazy news, isn't there, for mm. the driver market? Were you concerned Dan he Ricardo? might be jumping into the car next to you? Well, I put a stop to that. I mean, sorry, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say this. Um, I said, look, Dan is um, maybe not the right guy. Mm. Um, so please, no, we not have him. We just have uh, maybe not Leclerc's because he's too young and he looks fast. He he's looks fast. fast. Yeah, sure, no. No, I like want an old guy that doesn't give a shit. <laughs> I want an old drunk Finn who just <laughs> wants to be there for the money. So, I, oh, right. look, I better go look. Okay, it's been nice. Is there any more questions from no, you? No more questions. What's the name of this podcast? It's the, I don't uh, fucking care. I don't want to know. <laughs> Jesus, look. Okay, so hang on, wait, just one second. Hey, Antonio, get the bleach. Yeah, and the schluckenflacke. Bring it here now. Okay, that's it. Oh, Jesus. Okay, bye, Sebastian. Miss you, Lucky. Bye. See you, bye. That was nice. Wow. Exclusive F1 podcast. It went dark for me. Straight away. Mm. I don't know. I was excited to see him, but it just, it was a bit too intense for me. When he's the, is, is anus the German word for what I think it is? No. Because he's talking about an anus. No, I think it's a French newspaper. It's a French newspaper. It's the, yeah, it's the national newspaper. Actually, yeah, I think it is. It's either French or Spanish. There's actually a newspaper called anus. Yeah, there you go. Mm. So that's probably what he was reading. Yeah. So when he was bending over, he must have been reading the paper. I don't know if people read it or actually use it to wipe their ass. I'm not sure. That's what they called it. It's handy. Very it's handy. handy. Okay, let's talk about, Luke, that was great to catch up with Sebastian, by the way. It's always nice. Always Thank you so great. much, Sebastian, for catching up. And this is exclusive. He doesn't t- talk to anyone else, any other podcast, and except... he's given us an exclusive. Ex- there we go. Raikkonen. Let's get into that in a minute. Let's get into the driver market. Mid-season break. Mm. Looked like it was going to be pretty boring until... Luke, Dan, the personality Ricardo, threw a hand grenade into the 2019 driver market. It was okay. a holy hand grenade. Wasn't it? Mm. Marco did not like it. He didn't see that coming, nor no, did Christian. Didn't. So it, basically he was going to drive for Red Bull one day, jumps on an airplane, goes to the US, comes back and goes, actually, I'm driving for Renault. Mm. Nobody, nobody saw that coming. We no. didn't see that coming? Well, I think we mentioned it a few podcasts ago that this it's a possible destination for him, but it would be better to be at Red Bull. Yes. Um, so what happened We was, didn't seriously contemplate. No one was seriously thought No, 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 not serious. Um, Except Dan. But you look at Renault, you know, the year before Fernando Alonso won two world championships, they had won zero races in their comeback to F1. Yep. So he's thinking along those lines. Renault has um, acquired some handy people um but first i'll I'll backtrack and go before the hungarian grand prix it was settled and sorted daniel would sign for two years yep daniel was going to sign post hungarian test which was a couple days after the race he was driving the tuesday he would sign the tuesday and then fly off on his summer break what happened was on the grand prix weekend he said I want one year. Why would he do that? One year to have his options open. Waiting for Kimi to leave. Whether it's or Kimi, whether it's Mercedes, Mercedes yep. or whether it's Renault. Yep. Um, that gives his options open. Red Bull had to go to Dietrich Matisic, the boss of Red Bull, 
the energy drink company. Matisic said, yep, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. And he was all set to sign. They had a new contract ready for him at the Hungarian test after the race. And he'll say, I'll I'll sign it. Um, I'll have a think. And on the flight, he decided that he was going to go with Renault. And what's happened between him locking in for a year and jumping on that plane? Do, was it, have you got any inside info about Renault approaching him with a crazy offer last minute? So they've they've always they've wanted him, but they didn't think it was possible, right? Because they needed to show him that you know Daniel wanted a change. That's first and foremost, and I think that's why he was keen on. Okay, maybe I could do a year, but he doesn't want to stay in the position where. You know, if you look at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix where Max nearly ran him into the wall and you know, Daniel was quicker. You know, not every race Daniel's quicker and we, we can acknowledge that. Yep. But there was it was just they were going too far racing against each other. Mm. And there was no sort of hey Daniel or you know, they they've made packs in the past, let Daniel past. If he can gain a position up the road, he'll keep it. If not you guys swap positions on the last lap and yep. you keep your points. So we just want to see if Daniel can... They didn't do that. They didn't make that decision. Do you decision. think that Azerbaijan was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back yep. in a respect? I really do. Mm. Um, Renault has signed two people that of, of I think are of considerable talents and knowledge. One of them is uh, Budkowski, which we'd spoken about earlier in the year. He was an FIA technical delegate. And he knows the ins and outs of everyone's car. Now, before he was at the FIA for three years, he was an aerodynamicist in an F1 team for 10 years. So he's got the aerodynamics background and he also now has the inside knowledge of every car in F1. Wow. That's got to be handy. That is. And he started... And also he was slightly illegal. Is that not... Can you do that? Can well, you just... He worked for the FIA. So the FIA needs to make sure every car is legal. So that was his role. But is he? How is he eligible to work for a team if he worked for FIA and knowing all the teams? It's the same secrets. as if you go from one team to another. They have a, what they call gardening leave. So if you're going to go from the FIA to Red Bull, they were actually making it a three-month gardening leave, which is small. It's normally six to twelve months. So if Adrian knew is to leave Red Bull. He would have a six or twelve month gardening leave before he goes anywhere else. Um, but Kowski had three months, and everyone kicked up a stink. Christian Horner kicked up a stink because they were considering poaching guys like Charlie Whiting yep. because he knows all their all everyone's secrets. Um, but they thought no, no, no. And then Renault's come out and going, "Yoink! We'll grab this guy, um, Marcin Bukowski." And so yeah, he started work for Renault in April. And most cars design starts around July for next year's for next car. Year. So his work will be on next year's car. So if Daniel has a good car next year, it'll be from this guy's input. They also hired a guy from the Mercedes Power division. Um, when I heard about this, I'm like, okay, Renault's... Put, he's putting everything in place. Mm. Like Alan Prost has come in and they're finding we need this guy from here, need this guy from here. Kind of like what Schumacher did when he took his whole team from Braun to, uh, sorry, from Benetton to Ferrari, took Rory Byrne, yep. uh, Ross Braun, uh, and a couple of other guys. And he came in and, you know, within a couple of years they were winning, winning races, 97. I think they won a race. And, yeah, they nearly yeah, won right. the championship in 97. Yep. Um, this guy, Matthew Harmon, is the new uh, deputy chief designer. So some good He was the head guys. of powertrain integration. Yeah, right. And I've heard, um, mentioned this just before we started the podcast, it's a rumour, and it may not be true, Adrian Newey is a name that's been thrown around in relation to Renault. I think if Adrian... Adrian seems really happy at Red Bull because Red Bull's given him the opportunity to design... You're going to say wings. I'm glad you didn't say that. That would have been <laughs> a bit too corny, even for you. Yeah, I know. I'm full of corn. Mm. I'm still trying to get my head around the whole gardening leave, to be honest, just going back. 
So okay. it's basically it's in. It's but why enforced. is it called? Why don't we just call it getting high on a beach for six months? Why do you have to call it gardening? You know, who's going to go in the tool shed, get their gloves on, and get their gardening smock on? Not me. No, just no. get a reefer. Just say go have a have a doobie <laughs> have a Caribbean on a beach. With Sebastian, go sit with Sebastian. Get high. Yeah, you've bleach got- your asshole. <laughs> Is that, that's a list of requirements when to go in the Caribbean. All right, I'm going to go stand up paddle boarding. We've got an anal bleaching between four and four thirty. Does it really need that much a time? cocktail? <laughs> uh, oh, so shit. Uh, yeah, the, they call it. I don't know what they call the garden, but it's enforced leave that you can't talk to your new employer. You can't go yeah. to your work until. That's yeah. just the name they've given it. I don't, we can call it. You know, they're going to sit around and listen to the FM1 podcast. Leave. leave. Six months of listening to FM1 <laughs> podcast. <laughs> which have had would four, make which have had three anyone c- smarter and more compassionate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the of fate, course essentially, they have. essentially, Renault have got a whole bunch of new people in the wings yeah. that are talented. Uh, granted, they haven't got the budget of the big teams. I Not think. yet. I think they're working. They've, you know, they're factory backed. Um, and that's. Not many teams have factory yeah. backing, so it's Mercedes, yeah. Ferrari, Renault. And that's another reason why Dan has seen at, uh, Renault as being an attractive destination because it's a manufacturer. Yep. Um, it's not like going to McLaren. You're not dealing with someone who's dealing with someone else's engine. They are the manufacturer. So if you're going to be the number one driver of a team, be one of a manufacturing team. Yep. Cyril Abitbull, who is the um, head of... Renault has said that he wouldn't be surprised if um, next season Renault will be ahead of Red Mercedes Bull? and Ferrari. What? That's what Cut he said. Cut it out. That's He's, not... What? Gee, wouldn't that be amazing? But their budget is about a third the size of the big boys. So they would have to really come a long way. They'd have to find something in the rules... I think they'll get some. I think they'll get some more money. They've had to because I the, think I don't. I think well, they Renault, dropped out of um, Formula E, so they've got an extra cash maybe to throw around a bit. So they had. I think Daniel was asked was getting twenty million dollars a year if he was going to sign at Red Bull, which was the same as Max, plus yep. you know win bonuses and stuff like that. Um, I I believe that he's getting more at Renault. Than the twenty million yep. that was offered, yeah, per season. It's not bad coin. It's good coin. I think he'll be either the second or third best paid driver. I think he'll be the third best paid driver after Lewis and uh, Sebastian. Yeah. Um, and when Cyril Abibel told the factory at Enstone or Viri, I'm pretty sure it was at Enstone, um, there was a massive cheer that went around when they when he said we've signed Ricardo for next year. Yeah. Wow. So, do you really think they might have done it just just to have a crack at Red Bull, just to, out of spite? <laughs> what What do these guys really hate? They'd hate it if we picked one of their top drivers, and because let's face it, the relationship between those it's been strained, and that's one of the first things I thought of once it happened. Broken like, oh, right down. Oh, geez, that's oh, a low blow. It's a stinger. It's almost like we'll pay the extra money just to piss Red Bull off. Yeah, it's just, you know um, Max had just finished the Grand Prix with you know a loss of power and he's swearing on the radio. It's like, well, guess what? Yeah, we're about to kick you again. Yeah, and uh, we'll take Ricardo. Thank you very much. And it looks like those two teams will pretty much battle against each other. They'll be quite evenly matched coming to the next couple of years until the new regulations in twenty twenty one. Yeah, so they're going to be, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So you think you think it's a good move for Dan? I Maybe. think if it, I, you know, next year they'll be able to sort of find out where they are with their talent pool in the engineering side of things. They go, okay, we've got some serious people. You know, this is, I think it's their second year since they've they bought it from Lotus and, you know, they're going to be fourth in the championship. Yeah. And, and Renault aren't doing McLaren. They're not doing the whole, we've got the best car, we're going to have the best car next year, we're going to win races. They're being very conservative and I think responsible by saying... Dan isn't going to be doing any shoeys next year, nor possibly the next year they, after that. They do seem... They're underplaying it, their hand, well, I think. Well, I th- uh, from what I read from Cyril Abitbull, he seems very confident in next year's car. Yep. And he's very confident about the new um, spec engine that they'll be using, which I think Hulkenberg will be using this weekend at 
Spa. But I think Renault's moving the right way. Yeah. And I think that, as I said before, when Alonso won two World Championships, no wins on the board. That's why yep. That's why Mark Webber didn't go to Renault. He went to Williams because Williams won a race um, in the previous year and he could see yep. Yep. there was possibilities there where Renault yep. kind of sat on an amazing car for the next year. Yeah, and, and Dan, I think, is not complacent. He didn't want to stick around at Red Bull where he would be essentially probably feeling like the number two driver, even if the pay's the same. I know the teams are clear about the fact that they're not number two. He's not a number. There's no number one or number two. But I think there's more love towards Verstappen. Marco is a big fan of Verstappen. Yeah. Oh, let's do everything for Verstappen. I think Marco, I think it's just a... I think it's a how they handled the tough situations, they haven't been, um, they just haven't been smart. I don't think they've, I don't think they have favorites. I think they have a very good, um, you know, Matisic, Marco, Horner all praise Ricardo. Mm. Um, and they also praise Verstappen. And, yep. Um, Ricardo's had a bit of bad luck. Um, I've got some, some stats here about the heads to heads and, you know, who's had accidents and who's had mechanical failures and, um, for all the all the drivers and you know Daniel's been un, unlucky, so has Max to some extent. But um, I think in quality Max has had him this yep. year. Yeah. But but he's a lunatic, and he and just then, does know, stupid if stuff. If anyone if anyone listens to the Beyond the Grid and they've heard the Esteban Ocon interview, he talked about. Um, him racing Max in F3. Ocon won the F3 title. Max went on to F1 the next year. Esteban didn't. Um, I think Esteban came in mid-season for Mana for a couple of races. But to see and hear what Ocon said, he was Ocon's like, yeah, I on on any day Max could just turn it on and he's unbeatable. Yep. But he's just not consistent enough because he's too erratic that he can't mm pull a, a championship together yeah and whether or not that I, changes I think, with age i don't think I don't that'll change well it hasn't changed from the days when he was racing with ocon and it hasn't changed now mm. and he's been in f1 for what three three years mm. so maybe it won't change um but certainly i think that dan's made a good move i think i think i it's take Initially, it I was a bit skeptical. It took me a while skeptical. to convince people yeah. that this was a good move. I, there was a lot of my friends and but if, family a, were like, what is he doing? Yeah. He's crazy. Even on Twitter, I said, has he lost his marbles? They were like, yep, he's lost the plot. But uh, but as a long-term decision, I think that's a pretty clever maneuver. So look, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Um, let's also talk about another big move in the driver market. Huge. Huge. Alonso. We didn't see that coming. Another mm. one. Mm. It's just been, it's been a smorgasbord of interesting <laughs> stuff the last couple of weeks. So talk us through Alonso. We thought that he would be sticking around because it was kind of like, it was kind of Team Alonso. Mm. And he didn't seem to have anything to lose by, he was allowed to go off and drive Indy when he was there. So he seemed to have the perfect scenario where he could just drive Formula One cars plus do every, everything else that he wanted to do while getting paid, you know, huge amounts of money. Yeah, Why I, did he go? I think that McLaren just wanted to keep him as much as they could. Last year, McLaren weren't going to win shit. So drive Indy, that's fine. This year, he's allowed to drive the World Endurance Championship. Under Ron Dennis, he wouldn't be able to drive anything else other than McLaren. They tried everything. The Just to keep him. Yeah. You know, he, he drove for Zach Brown's United team for the Daytona 24 hours early in the year. Um, I th- it's funny, he's, he was saying that F1 was becoming too predictable and too boring. And, I saw that. And he, he made, you know, um, he pointed a few... Fingers at, you know, these were the great years of 2004 was one of them. Mm. Schumacher won the championship yeah. with about five races to go yeah. in 2004. Like that 2004 yeah. Ferrari was poor. It was yeah. I don't quite get what he meant by that because that's clearly not true. It, it's not true. Without, you know, I think if you if he was in a Red Bull or a Ferrari or Mercedes, he wouldn't be saying a single thing. Yeah. 
because he'd be happy that he's winning. I don't think he'd go, oh, I'm, I'm not happy that Williams aren't challenging us or Sauber aren't challenging us. That's not the case. Yeah, it's become a, a three-team battle. You know, if it's not one of the top three, you're not going to get these random wins. But you look at the money, the investment, the technology that, you know, there was races, even 2002, Mark Webber's first race, there was seven or eight cars to finish a race. Yeah. And back in the 80s, you'd have engine blow-ups, gearbox blow-ups, everything going wrong. Mm. You know, it was rarely driver. It was always just something broke. And there's just DNFs left, right, and center. Now, you know... Anyone can win. It's basically Max Verstappen, Daniel well, Ricciardo with, a, yeah. with, a, with an engine problem. Yeah, right. But there's, there's, it just doesn't happen anymore. And that's what happens. It's, you know, if... Look at Austria. You know, that wasn't... You, you didn't think that Mercedes, both cars would stop. But no. they did. Mm. There's unpredictability for you. It's yeah. funny, the, the very... Alonso was racing in the WEC race for Toyota. <laughs> he won... The Toyota car came second, and the Toyota car is pretty much the only manufacturer back LMP1 team because there's no Porsche anymore, there's no Audi. Right, that's predictable. That's predictable. It's predictable, and it's okay if you're winning. But then, the, funnily enough, after the race, about six hours after the race had finished, the two Toyota cars failed scrutineering and therefore both disqualified from the race, so Toyota didn't win the race. <laughs> so there's some under- <laughs> unpredictability for you. But I think that's put some people... They put their noses out a little bit. The fact that he's having a, a parting shot, but the thing, like he's saying, I could come back next year. Yeah. So what? McLaren will take him back. I think they would. They probably would. I think <clears throat> McLaren are clearly bending over backwards, and not just McLaren, like Liberty Media. Oh yeah, they want back. him back. They want him to be an ambassador while but he's he, gone. It's funny, you know, he's going to go to IndyCar. And they said that they agree with him. We we spoke about this for a while that we think he's going to IndyCar. And he's IndyCar yep. bound. Yep. So for me, it wasn't too much of a surprise. Um, but the the fact that he's left the door open to come back. So if McLaren picked their game up, mm. then maybe he could come back. Yep. But what, what a loss for the sport, though. I mean, we're talking about a two-time champion that could have been, like you mentioned earlier, a five-time champion. Yeah. He points. could be a five... Eight, Eight points, points away from a five-time world champion. That's ridiculous. He lost one... 2007. By one point. Mm. He lost another by uh, two or three points. 2002, 2010, then I 2012. Mean, he has been super unlucky, and he's put some pretty ordinary cars right in the mix and should have won oh, he's world a, championships. No Phenomenal doubt. Phenomenal driver. He's, a, he's one of the greats. It's a shame that he's not going to be considered as one of the greats yeah. in terms of championships. Statistics. And there's a lot of, you know, years at McLaren that have been, he's driven well. Yeah. And it is, I mean, if, okay, he's made some really bad decisions in what, with moving, obviously, mm. moving from um, Ferrari. That was mm. the biggest mistake he probably ever made. Yeah. If he'd stuck there, we would have probably seen him win when he had one, Sebastian was one season at McLaren stuffing up in 2017. You know, did everything that he possibly could to lose that, and then doing what he's doing now, running into walls and stuff. He'd be, he could be winning this. He could be winning. He could be hot favorite for this one. He could. He could be running number seven. <laughs> he could be a seven-time champion. He could. Um, it's just, it's unfortunate. You know, he's he's such a talent. I think there's a lot of. Someone was, I think it was Jody Schechter came out and said, oh, you know, he's overrated. I'm like, mm, I don't think he is. I think he's. When he was at Ferrari, he could really get the best out of them. Mm. But over the years, um, it just drained on him because he wanted a championship and they weren't giving it to him. And you can't say it's because he's driven like shit. And that's that's not it. Fernando Alonso, no matter what he drives, he gets, puts everything into it. And, and he gets the best out of it. And he gets the maximum the car can give him. Yep. Um, there's no one that, you know, outside of him drawing with Lewis Hamilton that year in 2007, I he hasn't been outshone by anyone. No. And he'll go to IndyCar next year and there's been, you know, where my thoughts, um, and I'm sure Adam's as well, are with Robin Wick- Wickens. Uh, Robert had a big accident um, at, I think it's Pocono. It's a speedway. He got airborne, went into the uh, fencing yep. and tore the car up ridiculously. Um, had a couple of broken... 
lower extremities, I think ankles, broken ankles, broken arm, um, vertebrae, broken vertebrae, and possible spinal cord damage um, or spinal cord injury. So it may not be the worst that immediately came into my head, but it's a, it's a miracle he just he didn't die from that. It's a massive accident. When you watch it, it's just painful to watch. It hurts. It's horrible. And uh, yeah, it's so. And and I immediately thought, does Alonso want to go here? Yeah, because <laughs> that's a big accident. And unless IndyCar changed the way that they use their safety, um, is this safety regulations not as good as Formula One's? Well, F one doesn't run on super speedways, so they don't. It's a different type of yeah. So it's rare that you see an F one car get airborne and yeah. then go into the fencing and torn up. Um, it did happen. Mark Webber doing an old flippy flip. Yeah, Mark Mark got airborne. But in terms of hitting the fencing, like at a super yeah. speedway, when you have contact, you're going straight to the wall. Yeah. You don't go inwards uh, unless, you know, un- when Greg Moore's unfortunate accident, he was sort of on the straight, got clipped, and then went into the infield and went grass, concrete yep. grass, flipped the car, and it kind of wedged like upside down into the wall. I remember I was in, I was in a mass... I was in a mass class in grade 12 and um, I was sneakily listening to the to the race <laughs> and I heard Greg Moore had his accident. I I was just... Because I only seen him like a week and a half, two weeks ago when he was in surface at the previous race. Yeah. Nice guy bubbling, bouncing all over the place and just you could tell he's just a mischievous, fun dude. And always had time for everyone. And yeah, when that crash, I saw the crash when I got home from school. Big accident. And, you know, people are still dying in IndyCar. Yeah, wow. You know, Justin Wilson, not last year before. Um, Dan Weldon, Greg Moore, or Greg Moore. And, you know, Robert Wick is a big accident. And the thing is, once they get airborne, they get into that catch fencing. The fencing's yeah. there to stop stuff going into the crowds and stop you, you know, flying outside of the... I, I have an idea maybe, I know this isn't F1 related, but using like a hockey style Perspex. Yep. So it keeps them in. But keeps have the integrity s- of the car, doesn't disintegrate yeah. by Cause catching. It's just, yeah, because when you have, when you look at Dan Weldon's crash, he went upside down and the poles that support the catch fencing, his helmet pretty yeah. much went straight oh. at 200 mile an hour. So not, once you get airborne, you're screwed. Wow. You know, Will Power, the Australian, was very close to that accident and could have had the exact same outcome. Um, so it's that's where Alonso's going to go and I hope that he does... I know he'll be quick and I know he'll do a good job, but I just hope that he yeah. finishes the year in one piece and hopefully can come back to F1 um, with whoever wants him. If, if anyone wants him, it seems like... Well, like Red Bull said, he causes too much mischief. They, they didn't even look at him. No. It's a shame that he's there's been a bit of bad blood with him and teams, and people just don't see him as uh, a team player. Yeah, he need he needs that team builder about him that yeah. makes people. And at Ferrari, you saw that, and like in the first couple of years, you saw that, and you know you could tell the passion. And, but I think as it wears on, and he's not winning. It's just like, I don't yeah. know how. And, and that's what McLaren's done. McLaren's just given him opportunities outside of F1 to, to try and there. keep him there because yeah. he could have walked last year, could have walked a year before. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's performance clauses in McLaren to go, you guys aren't performing, I'm out the door. And I think this is the case of he's like, oh, I want to get back to winning. I think in yeah. the World Endurance Championship, he's winning and he's driving really well. He's going to drive well wherever he goes. I just hope that he stays safe and comes yeah. back to F1 in one piece. Well, there's a spare spot now at McLaren. So let's take a look at the driver market mm. and let's have a little look. Can we go through the teams and get your take on the rumours, the confirmations on who's going to be driving for those teams? So firstly, Mercedes, unchanged, locked in. Yep. We've got Lewis and Valtteri Bottas. Ferrari, Sebastian is locked in. Kimi Raikkonen is not. We just heard it from Sebastian. Well, yes, but <laughs> is that just the sun and the bleach that's taken to his got to his head? It's, it's between Leclerc and Raikkonen. I hope it's Leclerc. But all money looks like it's going to be Kimi. It does look, look a little bit like I think with the passing like of Sergio Marchioni, Sergio Marchioni was quite. He wanted young blood to come in mm. because he sees, and he's right. Leclerc is a 
talent. Yep. A threat, possibly maybe mid-season to Sebastian once he gets his head around the car, but Leclerc, is a, he's phenomenal. Yep. Just get him in there now. I would, if I was a team boss, I'd have him in there and say, Kimi, thanks for your time. You've been with us twice. You've done, done a solid support role. But you're more than welcome to drive for Sauber. Or you can go yeah. down. Uh, maybe enjoy is your retirement. Go Se- to NASCAR. Sebastian work, worried that he might be too quick, and a young young guys and maybe just going to be pushing too hard. Uh, the thing know. is, you've you've made a, a junior development program. You need to honor use it. it. You need to. But Ferrari's not really known for that using their well. This young is guys. this would be the first one that's actually made the the step up. Yep. Where previous they've either put them, you know, they put them in Sauber. What they did with Massa and. Everyone had kind of hoped to get in those positions, but when you look at Leclerc, he's he's quick. Boy's quick. If he's not going to be the in Ferrari next year, it'll be twenty twenty for sure. Oh, if for sure. Kimi can't. He can't surely be any longer than another Kimi, Kimi year. Kimi would be another year. Um, and and the thing is, you know, Leclerc made some mistakes in in Hockenheim and Hungary. He got pinched a little bit. It yep. wasn't really his fault. But the two races before the summer break, you, you look at it and go. Mm, Okay, Leclerc hasn't had a great end to this part of the season, but he's no doubt a talent. And they could just go, hey, we're going to give you another year to learn. Yep. And it's it's another year that he'll shine, but it's just another year to sort of get better and more rounded as an F1 driver. Yep. So they it wouldn't be bad if they kept him there, but I, I would like to see Ferrari take a chance. They just don't seem to do that. Not they really. Seem to be safe. And Seems like, unlikely. Just like he's going to be against Sebastian no matter what. Just yeah. chuck him in there now. Maybe they give his give his give him a learning lesson while he's in one of the best. Maybe cars. they're trying to protect him. Maybe they want him to. Maybe they think it's too early. He might go in there and you know be scarred, uh, have he, a couple of bad results. The great thing about Leclerc is he's very honest with himself, mm. and if he knows he hasn't quite made the grade, he will turn everything over to find out what he needs to do to mm. improve, and then figure it out and yep. do it. Yep. So I have complete faith in him if he does get the... We back him. We back him in. We yep. just want to see Kimmy move on. Uh, he, he's now backed by the FN1 podcast. He sure right. is. It's official. It better be on his helmet for the next race. That'd be nice. That'd be very nice. That would be nice. Thanks, FN1 podcast. Mm. I'm hearing you. Uh, Max Verstappen is locked in for Red Bull. Lock it in. Uh, Pierre Gasly... Gas man. ...has just... Is this true? Just been locked in. He's locked in. It's official. It's it official. Was... He was in his underwear when he got the call. Is that right? Yep. What was he doing? Any idea? Yeah, he was hanging out with this, his mates on his holiday. As he does. He hangs underwear. out with his mates in his underwear. Yeah, sure. they were probably circle he's, jerking, but... He's French. They're right into that. They're very liberal. <laughs> they, a lot of hugging. All my mates touching. were around and then we were all... Yeah. Viva just uh, oh, yeah. That, grabbing each other's privates. I never hang around with my mates in no. my underwear. We should try that, I Luke. mean, we're doing it now, but this, yeah, is, but this is for work. That's different. We're podcasting. You're supposed to be in your undies, aren't you? <laughs> Um, what a horrible what, sight that would be. That's horrible. Tidy whitey <laughs> sitting here. That's nasty. That is really nasty, Luke. Um, now, I heard a rumor that... Is this your Adrian Newey one? <laughs> yeah, it could be the same one. But I heard a rumor that Carlos, Carlos Sainz, I think man. <laughs> turned down the Red Bull drive. No. Turned it down. No. That's what I heard. And it's coming from a reliable source, Luke. Is that your mum again? No. <laughs> now, your mum's a reliable source. My mum's not reliable on anything. She And she overcooks everything mm. and doesn't ever season. She never uses salt oh, when she no. cooks. It's frightening. That's anyway, terrible. no. This <laughs> is this is what I've heard, and mm. I am likely to believe it, that Carlos Science was offered the Rebel Drive. He turned it down. Mm. Anyway. I don't, uh, I don't think he would. But, mind you, the relationship between Max and Science isn't great. Correct. Gasly's done a really good job this year. He's been solid. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think Science, if he couldn't get that drive, he clearly lost the Renault drive. Yep. But he will pick up the McLaren he's, drive. He's locked in for McLaren. He's locked in he's for locked McLaren. He's locked in. Um, Adrian Newey, of course, just speaking of Red Bull, um, also talked that he may be going to Renault. That's more speculation. That's more. <laughs> I, I have no, I, write it down for when it happens, oh Luke, and I'll, I want you to remember I'll who said it, it first. I won't write it down because it's bollocks. Okay, <laughs> I've got it written down. Because even if he went to Ren, if, if he went to Renault, he, he would have no input on next year's car. It would be the year after. Correct. Car. That's that's correct. But that's you know he still could have an impact. I like the, your optimism. Thank you. I don't know where you heard this. Uh, I've got friends. <laughs> I got friends in the know. Let's just say <laughs> I'm quite friendly friends. with Kimi Raikkonen. 
Uh, <laughs> Sebastian, you're very friendly with. I'm more friendly with Kimmy. Um, mm. Okay, Force India. Nothing has been confirmed. There are some options there. Esteban Ocon, very talented driver. Sergio Perez, mm. who's been propping up, mm. saving the team after it went bankrupt. And in, um, But now Lance Stroll. Mm. Stroll. Daddy's bought the team. That's nice. Daddy. It's Force Stroll now. Can I have a dwarf? So the question is, with Force India and... Mr. Stroll jumping on board with his billions who could buy not only Force India but the entire sport. Billions. Um, Will Stroll be jumping in that seat before the season's done? Yes. Stroll will be jumping into the... Will uh, drop dropping into the Force India or Force Stroll or Stroll, whatever, as soon as possible. There's no point him being in a shitty car, even though he's a shitty driver and that's where he deserves to be. Yeah. Paid driver. Complete pay driver. Now he's just bought a whole team. He's the consortium of other people. It's not just Lawrence Stroll who's bought the team. Lawrence is Lance's dad. I, of course, he'll be driving when it probably won't be this weekend for the Belgian Grand Prix. Could be Monza. Yep. So this kind of bugs me though. Is it's conceivable that someone could buy themselves a championship if you've got Daddy who owns mm. the best team who mm. can afford the best engineers, mm. the best aerodynamicists. Mm. You could put Stroll in the best car mm. and put a driver that's worse than Stroll mm. if you can find him, mm. and he could be a champion. Could be. That's weird. The though. problem is, is I think even Lance in a Ferrari, it's still going to be shit. I don't think he'd win. No, no, I don't think he would either. You know, you would have to even putting Stroll in a Braun or a Ferrari. 2003 or 2004. But if that car is that much better than every other car, he's got a shot. And if he's got a driver, a co-driver that's worse than him, he's got mm. a chance. Anyway, mm. it, it won't happen. But no. So who's going to leave? Sergio? Uh, Sergio has too much money that's involved in the team and that's how he will keep his drive. And Ocon will be out. So big loser in this scenario? Ocon. Ocon. Who? Ocon, Ocon was set to drive for Renault because... Yeah. Uh, Toto Wolf was his manager, and to- he said to Toto, and Toto's pretty much teed him up for the Renault job, and then Bang Ricardo came in, screwed everything up for everyone. So they are looking for to put him in a drive, which could be McLaren with right. signs. Right. Lando Norris. So I know I'm jumping ahead teams for here, but I think it'll be Perez. Perez. Stroll. Stroll. Perez is a good driver. He's going to make Stroll Perez look pretty ordinary. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty good. I wonder how long Daddy will go, mm, my son's mm. really not that good. Let's move. No, he'll just keep moving. He'll shuffle teammates. He'll get rid of Perez, <laughs> get the next worst guy in, the next worst guy Perez after that. Perez brings a lot of, lots of Mexican pesos. Sure does. And I, I heard there's a huge upgrade coming for Force India. Is that something that you've heard? Yeah, they're taking the, the labels off. That Force is a, India and calling it something else. Cool. It's that, just brand. They're unbranded cars. That's going to take at least shave a half a second off. Oh yeah, too many stickers on that car. And get rid of the pink. No, keep the pink. Really? Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Williams. Okay, let's take a look at Williams. No one's locked in. No one's locked in. To be confirmed. Drivers on on the. The possibilities are, I'd say, definitely Kubica, Sergei Sorokin with another pile of money. So now that Stroll has left, going to Force India, which will you say will happen this year, he will drive yes. for Force India. That leaves a spare spot. They have only got for the rest of the season. Sergei, they've got a reserve driver. That's and, Robert Kubica. So there's no doubt in my mind, Stroll will leave to go to Force India. Yep, and he Robert, will still have financial obligations with Williams. Yep, which he will have to meet them. Mm-hmm. And Kubica will drive. Kubica will for, drive Formula One this year. Yes. That would be... In a race. A pretty cool story. Pretty awesome. Considering what he's gone through. We're talking about oh. a guy who's one of the top drivers in his day. Mm. Had a tragic injury driving. Rally has, accident. Rally accident. Has come back. Has got limitations physically. Can still drive a car. Rates himself highly. Faster than the two current Williams drivers. Mm. 
What a what a good news story that would be. What a great press story that would be for Williams. That would be massive. It would be massive. Absolutely huge. It's something that we pushed for in our previous podcast, getting a... Let's call him Ooh-Ah Kubitsar. Ooh-Ah Kubitsar in the car. Ooh-Ah. <laughs> That's great. I love the story. Come up with our chant already. Yeah. If he doesn't get in that car, I'll be so pissed. Mm. I mean, give oh, the he guy will. a shot. Like, once, once Lance leaves, it's there's no one else they'd put in the car. Yep. I, I can't see them putting Ocon in the car. Ocon will go and take Stoffel's spot. Yep. And, you know, Stoffel has his home race this weekend. Yep. So keep him in the car for that. And then... And it's a no, it's a no lose situation for Kubica because he gets to prove himself. And if he fails, it's okay. I've got an injury. We yep. all understand yeah, why. Yeah, you're filling in your reserve driver. I think he will blitz... But Williams so will come out looking like fairy floss. I think they'll get a couple of Polish sponsors on board. You get the sympathy of the Formula One motorsporting world. You've got a guy that's um, defeated, you know, all his demons, physical demons. Yeah, he's yeah. had over twenty surgeries on that hand. Yeah, and even if he sucks, even if he's shit, it doesn't matter because it's only what nine races to go. They've given it a crack. They look like the heroes. He won't be shit. He won't be shit. He's we know that he's Kibita. not going to be shit. He's bloody great, mm. and uh, we're right behind him. Go Kubica! Ooh, ooh ah, Kubica! Ooh, ah, Kubica! Drive that car! <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah, I stopped. The other one was better. The first time we did it. <laughs> Renault is locked in. We've got uh, Hulk Honey, Nico Hulkenberg, and Daniel Ricciardo. Big the personality, big, news. big loss for Red Bull as well with the uh, the brand. You know, Pierre Gasly coming yeah. in for Ricciardo. What's he got? Has he got any the the, the sort of older brother style that he had with Max? The no good, they got along really well, considering. Yep. yep, good banter between the two. But he's a marketing machine, Dan. He's yep that smile and that personality. Great for Renault. I might even buy a car. Yep. Or Renault could give me one. Would you really buy a Renault? Yeah. Really? I, uh, their RS cars are quite nice. Yeah. Good bit of grunt. They I, wouldn't, nice. I wouldn't buy a Citroën. I'd, ha- I'd have Ricardo on the window. Like, the you know, the sticker. touring cars where they've got the name on the window? Yeah. I'd have Ricardo on it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I'd have DR3 license plates. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to buy it. We're going to buy matching <laughs> hats, aren't we? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. That hat looks pretty cool. Yeah. The yellow, the black, mm. the T-shirts, maybe with our, our names on the back. Yeah. I like Get it. Get it official. Yeah, make it official. Uh, it's a cool looking hat. Uh, Toro Rosso. What the hell is going to happen with Toro Rosso? Brendan Toro Rosso. Hartley. So, Brendan, who knows? Someone needs to step in and take the position off Hartley. So, they're going to bring Lando Norris in. Mm. Right, that's That's... McLaren want a guy, the technical director, I think, or a designer for Toro Rosso. His name's James Key. McLaren announced they had James Key, and Toro Rosso go, ah, oh, no, he's got another year on the contract. You don't have him. Not a chance. Right. McLaren like, but we want him. Too bad. Can't have him. We've got him under contract. So there could be a give us Lando Norris. Mm. You can have James Key. Right. So that would be the swap. Other position, there's Dan Tictum and there's um, Alexander Albon who are in the Red Bull development driver program. Dan Tictum is in the European F3. Yep. He needs to win that championship to have enough points. I don't think he's going to win the championship, so I don't think he's going to have what they call super license points. Yep. Points are qualified to drive F1. Uh, Alexander Albon... um, He's a British tie driver. I think he races under the tie flag, I think. That'd be cool. Have a, but I a tie driver in there. I don't see him. He's done pretty well this year. It's a shame that Marco doesn't rate him. That's no, not going to help. And if Marco doesn't rate you, you have no chance. So that they'll need to put someone else in the car. It could be a matter of, well, we'll just chuck Brendan Hartley in for another Might year. Might get a lifeline. You know. There's there's a lot of guys out there who used to race under Red Bull that could fill the spot. There is rumours that Jean Eric Verne has had contact with some F1 teams. Winner of the Formula E, Formula e. Uh, former Daniel Ricciardo team out of Toro Rosso. Yeah. Um, Red Bull just discarded him. I, yeah, he's done. Great. They discarded him purely to bring in signs of Verstappen. That that was their plan. Ricciardo went up, and then he didn't have a drive. I think Jev did a great job against Ricciardo. Um, so I, 
Or didn't he, he? I would like to see him come back because I think he, drove, he didn't deserve to lose his spot in F one. No, he was driving with he, Kvyat. Because Ricardo didn't wipe the floor with him. No, Jeff did a really good job. I think um, Jean Eric realized that what Ricardo did for the team, uh, even at Torosso. So say would they would get eighth, and Daniel would come in and be bouncing and smiling and high fiving everyone, and the whole team would just revolve around him and his energy. Yep. Where if jean Eric Verne got eighth, he'd just be like... Just a Frenchy, I got eighth. Frenchy, whingy guy. I wanted to win the race. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're not in a car that can win the race. So I, he he realized that, okay, what he was doing, what Ricardo was doing, was doing a better job than he was getting the team around him. Yep. And I should appreciate, you know, small team wins. You know, Toro Rosso is not going to do what they did with... Um, Sebastian, when he won the won that race, I think it's two thousand six, two thousand seven. Yep. It's just and know. Christian Horner uh, said that year that they were looking to promote one of the two. Said that uh, Vern was actually leading, was favoured halfway through the season to Dan, but Dan had a better end of year, mm. so he was really close to jumping up to Red Bull. And that's that's the frustrating thing is he could have, he should have been, he should still be in F one. Whether it's well, under it's clearly good whether enough. it's under Red Bull, whatever, but you know Jean Eric Verne's gone on to win the Formula E Championship, and a lot of guys like um, Ant De Costa, uh, he's he's come out and said, you know, I'm not upset that Red Bull didn't keep me in F1 or promote me into F1 because they've given me a career that that how where it is yeah. today. Um, so I hope Jeff can get back into F1. I don't know what they're going to do with the names because V-E-R is now Verstappen. Mm. Before Verne was V-E-R. Yep. Um, and when there was V-E-R and V-E-S, when it was Verne and Verstappen yep. were, were right. there. Um, but yeah, I, I, it'd be interesting to know. I would like to see him back in F1. I think he deserves it. Uh, he s- could, even, could even get a drive for Haas. Well, yeah. I'm surprised if he doesn't get in some offers after that awesome season he's had. Be surprising if he didn't. In, in a team, the T cheater, the Tech cheater, or T E cheater. I don't, I'm not sure how they said, but for the team that was pretty rank ordinary early on in the season, they really turned around and he drove a really good championship. Mm. So he deserves his spot in F1. He never deserved to lose it in the first place. He was a very good teammate against Ricardo, tested Ricardo, sometimes quicker than him. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, he deserves a spot. He could go to Torosso. He could go to another team. He said he has had contact with a team. He hasn't speculated who. Yep. I think he's contracted though, so that wouldn't probably happen. Oh, I think that would, could you you know, break most, it. Most uh, drivers who want to be an F1 will have a little clause in their contract that says, if an F1 team comes knocking, I'm going there. Mm. Maybe he doesn't want to be there. He may not want to be in Formula 1. Might be quite happy. I think he. I think he everyone wants to be in Formula One. I think one. he wants another Come on, shot. Let's be honest. Mm. Uh, McLaren. Let's look at the driving lineup for McLaren for 2019. Uh, Carlos Sainz locked in. Lock it in. I think he was hoping to be teaming up with his good, uh, his bum chum, his mm. idol, Alonso. That didn't I think, happen. I think they knew. I think he knew that he'd be taking Alonso's spot. Um, who's going to be in car number two? Good quote. Um, could be any what Stoffel Van Dorn. Lando Norris, Ocon, Ocon. I don't think I think Ocon? Lando's going to go to if if McLaren get James Key, uh, Lando Norris is a lock in at Toro Rosso. Um, so it'll be Stoffel or Ocon. Uh, I think McLaren are leaning to Ocon, which oh, Van Dorn is such a good driver. And if you look at his teammates out, outside of Alonso's teammates, um, let's look at the 2017 stats that. Uh, La- Sorry, not Lance Stroll. Between Fernando Alonso and Stoffel Van Dorn, Stoffel was in just with within two tenths of the average qualifying speeds. You know, there were some races where uh, Stoffel was, you know, a, a thousandth of a second or two thousandths of a second behind in qualifying. Yeah, wow. he beat him in Q one, and then he just got, you know, got pipped fractionally by. So there's not there's sometimes where. Clearly, Alonso's just got everything switched on, and there's times where Van Dorn's really close. And I think mm. the way he dominated GP2 in the championship year that he had, I watched that season. He was impressive. That boy's got talent, and if he leaves F1, 
that's shit. Mm. Because you, it's a feeding ground, you know. He's a yep. GP2 champion, just like Lewis Hamilton. Yep. And he deserves... It just kind of sucks that he's had to come up against Alonso. And Alonso being Alonso is just going to make everyone look kind of ordinary. <laughs> That's it. So I, I hope he gets a drive in F1. I hope he stays in McLaren. Um, yeah. But he, if he's... Ocon needs a seat, I think they're, <clears throat> they're going to push... Because his, his stock has kind of plummeted, Van Dorn, and they look like they're pretty close to just getting rid of him. They so. could get rid of him yeah. next race. Which would be a real shame. Would. Because someone's going to, one of these good drivers will probably lose a spot with these young guys coming in. There are going to be some good drivers that won't be driving next year. Yeah. It seems mathematically. But I think Ocon, certain. Ocon deserves a drive. It's just he's had. So does Van Dorn. Alonso. Yeah. Marcus Ericsson. Boot him out. He could go. Speaking of Alfa Romeo, uh, Sauber, too much cash. IKEA, very mm, generous. Oh, very generous with their money. Um, Charles Leclerc, will he be there next year? Will he Sauber's be a, a strange one. I'm not sure who they're going to go with. If uh, Raikkonen wants to take a number, a team leader role at Sauber, they're clearly improving. They got a bit of a an extra money boost from Ferrari. So maybe he could go there. Ericsson, I can't see him staying. I don't see a reason for him staying past that time. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's one that's clearly open. Giovinazzi is a possibility for Sauber. He's their Ferrari development program. Uh, he drove a couple of races last year. Um, he's talented, a bit erratic. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I rate Giovinazzi if he can keep the car on the track. It could be, be the next Pastor Maldonado. Oh, I and hope we having can only an Italian, dream of it. Having an Italian is a big thing as well. That's nice. Yeah, but there's there's some some good talent. Uh, George Russell, but he yeah. really won't have anywhere to go unless he goes to Williams. Yeah, as as a Mercedes development driver, if he wins a championship, he can't race in GP two again. Yep, or Formula Two again. Yep. So if you win Formula Two. You can't be in it next year, so he'll either have to go to the Super Formula in Japan or race another series somewhere else. Possibly chuck him in Formula E or just keep him as a test driver for Mercedes. Looking forward to seeing these young drivers next year. It's always good to see a fresh batch and some super talented kids. Cause it's going to be a good batch. The twenty nineteen. I just want to be shaken up a little bit. I don't want to be status quo. It's great that Daniel's yeah. made the move. I agree. It's kind of screwed it up, and Alonso's leaving. So there's open spots and yep. changes are coming. So it's Surpri- exciting times. Yeah, surprise us. We want to find the next little diamond. Uh, and I think the Ricardo Hulkenberg is. That's a dream lineup. Yeah, for me that is. That's a wet dream lineup. Damn right it is for you. That's your yeah, Hulk. And Dan, yeah, it's going to be... That's got to be the best driving pairing, mate. Wow. It'd have to be pretty close. Mm. I'm aroused just thinking about it. I know you are. I can see it. Yeah. It's not pleasant (laughs) being this close to you. But there are some awesome drivers going to be in there. It's going to be exciting stuff. Lots of young drivers as well. And it all started with Dan. Just... just Throwing a curveball. Throwing that curveball. Licking it it and sending it. Sure did. And it's just... It's trickled on from there. Now it's just the snowball effect that it's, we're still kind of getting to terms with. Yeah. And the final seats will come. Will we find out relatively soon with the rest of the seats? Surely. Yeah. I think announced. by the end of September, everything should be sorted. Exciting times. Mm. The driver market for 2019. Um, it's a lot of and fun. Haas, yes. I I think Magnussen will stay. I hope they move yep. Grosjean on. He's, yeah, he's got to go. <laughs> move him on and on. Yep. Um, I would like to see Joseph Newgarden, the American driver, come in. That's my roughy. Yeah, wow. That's who I would like to see in the car. If not, Stoffel or um, any of these other... Just a couple. It's a young guy with Kubica. some talent. Kubica. He's talent. Love a good... Uh, but I think uh, Magnussen, he's done too well this year to, to lose his spot. Yeah, and he's been I, good. I don't think Grosjean has. He's been really good. Uh, let's now preview uh, a spa, which is coming up spa. in a couple of days' time. Oh. Um, we spent a lot of time on the driver market, but that's okay. It's been a long time, and we needed to get into it. So let's been talk about. Been a long about, time. Been a long time. Been a long time. Let's get into spa right now. This is a good track. Yes. Some sweet corners, and the there's great a great track. Everybody, fast stuff. Yeah. Good downhill. 
off camber, on camber, you name it, this track has it. Um, overtaking possibilities, a couple of DRS zones, um, some some of the greatest corners in F1 is at this track alone. It's a 7.004 kilometer track. There's 44 laps of this beautiful track in the Ardennes Forest. The lap record, which is actually set early in this year by Porsche, they put their 919 hybrid tribute car, so they made their LMP1 car, took all the stuff they don't need for endurance racing, yep. made it as light as possible, closed off a few holes because they don't need to race 24 hours, yep. and then just turned the wick up from, I think it was uh, the racing, they're, they're doing about 900 brake horsepower. For this lap, they're pumping out 1,200 horsepower. Sweet Jesus. Um a top speed of 223 miles an hour, which is 359 kilometers an hour. Wow. Um, it was eight, eight tenths quicker than Lewis's 2017 Belgian Grand Prix pole. That's crazy. Which I think it will end. Like when they when they qualify this weekend, barring no rain, yep. which it's been very wet this morning, um, that Lewis, um, the the... The lap record of a one minute forty one point seven seven zero will cease to be. We'll get smashed. Will be an X record. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, one of the whether it's Sebastian or Kimi or Lewis or Valtteri, they'll break the lap record. Um, beautiful track. Um, last year's race was won by Lewis. Sebastian and then Daniel Ricciardo was third on the podium. Qualifying was Lewis, Sebastian, Valtteri Bottas. A little bit for everybody. Oh, it's a great track. I'm pining, mm. pining for the fields. And there's there's been a bit of a viral video going around about the the corner au rouge, a Radion. Yes. If you go on to the WTF1 website, you'll see what that's all about. Is it young Lando? That made the mistake. There's quite a few people that are that didn't recognize that are giving it. the outline of the racetrack, and Eau Rouge is the corner where Mark overtook Alonso on the entry, and that's Eau Rouge. The corner that's up the hill, the right hander, is called Radion. Um, people so get confused. People think that the right hander is Eau Rouge. A lot of people refer to it as Eau Rouge, but it's actually Radion and. The, the, the British guy makes a quite nerdy, accurate point of, oh, that's Radion. Ouch. Mm. It's a burn. It's a great burn. But it went on a little bit long for me. Six minutes of him saying, I think you could cut it down to three yeah. and just repeating the same thing. That's yeah. Radion. Oh, that's Radion. Oh, that's yeah. Radion. No one likes gloating. Don't have to gloat about it. No, not as funny as us. <laughs> um, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it... There's no real favourite car that you could see winning this. I mean, it's pretty pretty balanced for a Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull. There's a first section that looks pretty good for Red Bull, and you got some I other bits. I think it'll be a Ferrari Kate War yep. this weekend. I'd like to ask Alonso how predictable it is because he says everything's in F1 so, is predictable. so predictable. So predictable. Um, but yeah, I, I, th- I hear that Hulkenberg and. Someone else has engine penalties this weekend. Yep. Nothing for Red Bull? No engine penalties? I think there they should be. I think if they want the new spec engine and it's a good track to overtake, I would suggest, hey, have a bit of fun. Yeah. I can't imagine Dan getting too many favours from Red Bull in terms of pit stop strategies from now on. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there's no way Red Bull will let him finish in front of Verstappen. <laughs> They're not going to want... Dan having a higher points tally by the end of this season than Verstappen. There's mm. no way. There'll be a lot of mysterious things going on with Dan's car. A few car. hydraulic issues. Yeah, a few things that just Weird don't technical to... things. Oh, come into the pits now, Dan. What? I think, yeah. It's only, race, it's only a little, like third lap. What? I, th- I think they know that they've, you know, they've lost him, so maybe don't pull out all the favours and, and do all the right. But, you know, they're there to win races. They're there to get as many points as they can. So. That's true. I think it's just they're not going to shoot. They're, they're safe the in third. Like it's daylight yeah. between them and Renault. Yeah, it's a hundred points. I think so. They can fuck him around. Yeah, <laughs> totally. They can, but totally. I, I don't think they will. I think it's a matter of oh, well, we lost. I hope driver. not because it sets a precedence. Because it says you know if it happens in the future, like don't go to Red Bull because this is what will happen if you yeah. ever decide to leave. But the thing with Red Bull they're is not do that. you you know they've paid a lot of money to put a lot of junior drivers through 
you know, they probably paid 200 grand for Daniel to drive in the Formula Renault 3.5 V8s. Yeah. You know, they've paid a lot of money for a few of his series. So, you know, he paid them back. He's been in the within the company for 10 years and, you know, just like Seb Vettel, you just got to move on. Yeah. This is, this is Daniel moving on. Yep. Should we look at uh, predictions for this race? Predictions, yes. Yep. I've made my predictions have you? already, yeah. Oh, really? Can I have a look at them? No, uh, you oh, can't. Fair enough. Thank God I'm right-handed. <sighs> All right, then fine, whatever. Um, Mercedes. Mm, uh, Mercedes, uh, Lewis. Lewis Hamilton. Ferrari. Um, Sebastian Vettel. Dan Ricciardo. Mm-hmm. Um, Fort Senior, what have you got next? Renault. Renault, uh, Hulk. Hulkenberg. Haas. Haas. Let's go. Suck my balls. Kevin Magnuson. Mm-hmm. Um, McLaren. McLaren. Um, you know what I'm going <laughs> to... You can just write it down. You don't even know to ask me. It's not Stoffel. Force India. I know how good he is. I know he's good, mm. but he's just not that good. He's mm. not Alonso good. Force India. Oh, let's go... Ooh. I'm going to go Ocon. Ooh. Yeah. I don't normally do that. No. No. Williams. Um, it's got to be the Russian. The Rusky. <laughs> Sauber. How many points am I behind? Four. You're four points ahead, mate. Oh, I'm four, I'm four points ahead? Yes. Oh, yeah, right. Nothing changed. This is going to... This is going to... Status quo. This is going to blow out for you. Um, <laughs> sorry, who's the next one? Toro Rosso? Sauber. Oh, Sauber. Um... Ooh. <laughs> Sauber, let's go. Oh, I couldn't. Could I? Couldn't go to the stay at home Viking? No, I'm not, I'm not going to. He's hopeless. <laughs> Toro Rosso. Gas metal Harley. How similar are our tips so far? Are they very similar? Mate, there's some big differences. Really? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you once, once you get this last one out. I'll go Gas Man. Gas Man. All right, I so wasn't looking. I wasn't looking. Mercedes, Ferrari, we've gone the same. Yeah. Renault, we've gone the same. Yeah. Williams, we've gone the same. Sauber, we've gone the same. Ooh, the rest are different. So Red Bull, I've gone Max. Qualifying Daniel, race. Um, Haas, Grosjean for qualifying Magnussen, race. For McLaren, I've gone Van Dorn. Oh. Belgian Grand Prix, home race, something to prove. Still not enough. And Still not enough. And I think, you know, Perez, there's a bit of movement in strategy in terms of tired, deg. I think per- mm-hmm. Perez will do pretty I think well. You, the problem is for you, Luke, the reason you fall behind is you overthink it. Mm. And I've gone for Hartley. Yeah, see, that's where you... <laughs> no, you sound like you're crazy. Sound like, you know, you're getting desperate because you fall, fall down. That's what it sounds like right now. You're getting desperate. <laughs> I went through a lot of statistics. I had a look at things and I thought, you that's know That's where what? you're going wrong. Van Dorn only just lost qualifying last year to Alonso. This is why, Luke, F1's a feeling. <laughs> it's a feeling inside. It's not all upstairs. It's in the heart. Mm. I'm um, going through statistics. You are. And meticulous preparation. That's what you do. That's where your <laughs> strengths lie. That's what you do. Mm. Um, do we have an effing what segment this week? Effing an- what? Effing what? No Fernando Alonso in F1 next year. That's Ricardo sad. to Renault. Effing what? That's enough. Enough said. Just, that's, a mi- that's a mic drop. I do have one thing that I want to get through. I wrote a, a bucket load about this, and it took me ages to do it because no website until I'd actually finished it, and about a week later, someone put it out. Head to heads. Yep. So Hamilton qualifying seven to Bottas is five, race eight to three. So Hamilton is well ahead yep. of Bottas yep. in terms of qualifying and races. Uh, Hamilton has had one mechanical failure. Uh, Bottas has had one mechanical and one crash. Um, Vettel Raikkonen, it's 10 to two in qualifying for Vettel. Yep. And seven to five in the race to Vettel. Um, Vettel has had one crash um, or collision. And Raikkonen has a mechanical. He had um, and two other incidences where he's um, the broken leg in Bahrain. Yep. That was his race done. Yep. So he's had two DNFs. Go to Red Bull. Um, Max Verstappen is ahead nine to three in qualifying. Oh, um, and it's five to five each in the race. 
Now, Ricardo has had four retirements. Jeez. And Max has had four retirements. Both of them have had three mechanical failures. Yep. For each. And two collisions, which we know is the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Uh, so, you know, there's eight potential scoring points for those for Red Bull. And with, you know, Austria, um, Mercedes had a double retirement. Red Bull have had two double retirements in Bahrain and Azerbaijan. Yep. Bahrain was uh, power related. Um, Azerbaijan was contact. A double retirement for the Haas team in Australia with their pit stop issues and Terry. Uh, France, there was a double retirement for Ocon and Perez. Um, double retirement for um, Sauber. And yep. A double retirement for the Williams. In theirs, Hulkenberg has had three retirements this season. Mm. Sainz has had zero. Wow. Hulkenberg is 9-3 in qualifying and 8-3 in races. So he has wiped the floor with him. Totally. And Hulkenberg has had two collisions, one of his own in Azerbaijan and a mechanical failure in Austria where he was in a decent point scoring chance before he had a turbo issue. Magnussen Grosjean. Magnussen is 9-3. Wow. Wow. Oh, sorry. I read the Magnus one. Hulkenberg is seven to five and seven to five in the races. Right. Magnuson is nine to three and eight to three. So that's wow, that's done. domination. Yeah. Grosjean has had three collisions and the pit stop issue in Australia. Magnuson has only had the pit stop issue in Australia in terms of did not finish. Perez and Ocon. Ocon has out qualified him nine to three and outraced him seven to four. Um Ocon has had a mechanical and a collision, uh, two DNFs, and Perez has only had one DNF. So Ocon's kind of owned it um, this year, but the points yep. I don't think really reflect, um, it. reflect that. Uh, Van Dorn and Alonso. Alonso, 12. Van Dorn, 0 oh, in Wallach. Um, Alonso in race 8 to 4. Um, Alonso has had four mechanical DNFs. Mm. And Van Dorn has had two mechanical DNFs. Uh, over to Toro Rosso, we look at Gasly has outqualified nine to three and raced seven to five. Gasly's had two crashes, uh, one in Spain, which wasn't his fault when Grosjean decided to do a burnout in front of the whole yep. outfit, which yep. is one of the races that took Hulkenberg out. And Hartley's had three mechanical failures and a crash. Jeez. And that crash was the one with Stroll in Canada, where he was going around the outside of him. Yep. Um, so, you know, Hartley, Alonso, the two Red Bulls have had, and Grosjean have had four DNFs. Um, but Grosjean, three of those has been crashes. Uh, Leclerc and Ericsson. Leclerc has had three failures, two mechanicals and a collision. Ericsson has had um, a mechanical and a collision, so... Three DNFs for Leclerc, two DNFs for Ericsson. Leclerc has outqualified nine to three, and Leclerc has outraced six to five. And the last, but no means least, no, really least, they're Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Stroll and, and Sorokin. Can you pick a winner between two duds? Mm, who's hard. the duddest? Mm. So Stroll um, has been outdone in qualifying seven to five, so right. Sorokin's ahead in qualifying. And in the race, Stroll is six and Sorokin is five in terms of positions. Uh, Stroll has four points, three DNFs, um, collision. He's had um, a mechanical where the, I think he had the the tire exploded on him because he put a giant flat spot on it. Yep. Um, Sorokin's had two mechanicals and a collision. So they both had three DNFs. They're both pretty useless and so is the team. And that's why you are regarded in the industry as the greatest, <laughs> most articulate mind in Formula One. That kind of research right there. Yeah, that You've took me way too long to do. painstakingly gone through every single race, all the rewinds, the fast-forwarding. <sighs> yeah. But, hey. A lot of tissues. It hasn't gone to waste. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Because your mum is listening. People have skipped. 
Mrs. Luke appreciates it. And she's put on a wonderful spread. Hasn't in your she? house. I know. She came to your house. We're she recording did. in a different location. And she got lost. Adam's house. She but got that's lost. okay. She gave some nice free ons. My so neighbours got a neighbours. Yeah, mm. she actually thought the neighbours was was our house, but that's fine. They got a beautiful spread of Hungarian treats, <laughs> sweets and treats. But she did bring us some Belgian she did. treats, and also, um, did we? Um, she has requested that we speak to Kimmy. We are we are about to take a peek, a little sneaky peek, and have a look at what Kimmy's up to. Because I think your it's mom, one of my favourite segments. Mine too. Very. Mm. Po- is it your mum's requesting? Um, normally, we get to, uh, F1 podcast listeners to request a situation they'd like to see Kimmy Raikkonen in. Well, where Kimmy is right now, mm. wherever he is around the globe, mm. I'm not sure where he is. We'll find out where he is, and we just find out what he's doing. It's like a little portal. Should we intro the segment? Should we? Yeah. At home with Kimmy. I think that was one of our best. Oh, you're still going. It was nice. <laughs> We like just do like a little stop. Yeah. Um. So, Luke, <clears throat> where's um? I can't hold a note. Where are long. we? You, you really can't. Where Where is Kimmy <laughs> today? Where are we to. checking out Kimmy? Are we just uh. Do we have someone that's on Twitter that's requested a situation? These are our options. What are the options? I can't read your handwriting. I, I don't want your to handwriting's read. terrible. I, What's I that word? Celo. <laughs> that's Seb. Oh, Seb. Seb's come to visit, <laughs> defrosting Se- the fridge. <laughs> we're trying to work out Instagram. Who did? The, which Twitter listener was uh, defrosting the fridge? Oh, that was just something that came to my head. Oh, righto. <laughs> righto. And what working Instagram? Yeah, because he's, he's recently posting a lot on Instagram. <clears throat> I think it's his wife he's doing most of it. Yeah. But him just trying to work out, you know, how to do a story and... I th- I think I think I could speak. We're kind on, of giving a little bit of a behind the scenes now of what how, how the we the amount of research and hard work that goes on before these podcasts happen. It's so um, we normally don't talk about the situation. We normally just go into it. And then yeah, and I'm not going to edit this out. No, this is this is staying. So you're getting a sneak peek. This is a keeper. At how we work. Um, well, I think I speak on behalf of most F One <laughs> podcast fans when I say that I'd love to see Seb <laughs> coming to visit. I would like to see <laughs> too. I love to see Seb visiting Kimmy's house. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. That would be great. So um, let's see. Let's go. Where, where is uh, Kimmy Raikkonen right now? In Reykjavik? <laughs> is that the capital of the Iceland? You did Finland? Oh, fuck. You've said that before. <sighs> Helsinki. 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 It's the place Country I'd love me. to be. It's cold in winter Finland, and cold Finland. on the TV. <laughs> Helsinki. Can we cut this part out? No, Helsinki, no, Helsinki. It's where Kimmy wants to be. <laughs> Maybe that could be the new intro. Yeah. To Kimmy at home with Kimmy. Finland, Finland, Finland. Finland. Okay, so let's... It's the okay, so Sebastian, form. it looks like Sebastian's just rocking up to Kimmy's place right now. Yeah, I'm going to take a back seat to this. <sighs> hey, come on, Kimmy. <laughs> What's going on, man? I'm just waiting at the front door. Kimmy! Come in. Don't be cross at me. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Sebastian. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> hey, what's up? It's me. Sebastian Vettel. Your teammate from the Formula 1 racing car team. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, fuck you. I know exactly who you are. Yeah. Call me fucking team owners. Fuck you. Oh, come on in. Come on in, Sebastian. Come on in. Hi, thanks very much. Hi, oh, what a great place. Look at this. So much room. Wow, not so many trophies as my place, but uh, hey, it's still nice. It's cozy. Oh, Jesus. What's for lunch? Are you making me some lunch? Yeah. So what do you want? Um, I don't know. Whatever you just do. Don't, wait, don't think about me. Just go ahead like you would normally do on the, on the afternoon. Is. What, do you, what, do you, what is this? Yeah, it's pickled fish. Oh, great. Yeah, that sounds... Uh, I've just been to Bermuda, so I've had the ocean bleaching. Um, I'm sitting on the beach with the fellas. So, um, yeah, pickled fish sounds nice. You what? You fucking had your ass bleached? Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't believe you're my teammate. All right. Okay, well, here, have some fish. Hey, thanks. It's just great. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, i got to go now, so I'll see you later. 
Oh. <laughs> I wonder who could that could be. Uh, let me get the door. Hang on. Oh, let me. <clears throat> Hello. It's me. Oh, g'day. Is Brendan Hartley here? I'm. Uh, I'm just practicing for my new job at DHL. Here to deliver you a package. I think it's your new contract. Oh, gee. oh, really? My new contract? Oh, yeah, I think you get to re-sign, bro. Oh, it, did you see from Ferrari or someone else? No, it, it... Is it got a Ferrari sticker? Yeah, bro, it's got a Ferrari sticker all over it. Hey, hey, guys, what's, what's happening? If you don't want it, I'll have it. Ah, oh, Brendan, what are you doing? Come on in, you oh, handsome... Oh, no, I've got to deliver some other stuff. No, no, come here. No, Jesus. I've got, got to go, bro. If I don't get this, I'll lose this job too, so... Brendan. I'll, I'll see you at the next race, eh, bro? Okay, br- Brendan. Oh, Darcy's is good. Bye, Brendan. Bye. See you later. Oh, he's really nice. Yeah, he's a shit driver. Oh, finally, my fucking Ferrari hero, contract. you fucking prick. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Fuck you, Brendan. I'm driving for Ferrari. And that was At, at home, home with Kimmy. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it went that well. <laughs> I'm so confused. When I'm like, yeah, let's do that one. I'm like, it's all you, man. It's all you. But you saved my ass. <laughs> I you had sa- to come in. As soon as the door knocked, I went, thank God. <laughs> thank God Brendan Harley's here. That's what I was thinking. I thought Sebastian and Kimmy are going to kill each other. <laughs> I was wondering was where you were going with it. There was no direction. There was no... It was... All I had was pickled fish. <laughs> and... Ass bleaching. So the, the much-awaited return of At Home With Kim is just come back and... Could be the last time we ever get no, that segment. No, no, no. Should we can that segment? At Home With Brendan. Yeah. Oh, what's in the jobs this week? I think... I think we need to just... Retire Kimmy from that segment. <laughs> we got to, we've, we'll find something new for you. I'm sure we'll tune in on a more yep. episode. It's, it's the holidays. It's the holidays. He's relaxing with He's Seb. Relax- yeah. Just and kicking back with Brandon's Seb. has got another job. Yeah. Hmm. We might, it might be a push to get those two together again. The Sebastian and Ryan, Kimmy, it's, it's a big ask for me. <laughs> it's a big ask. <laughs> it is. Yeah, no, I'm not that talented. To, I don't have to do a single thing. Um, so, uh, I guess that's pretty much wrapped up. It's like a four-hour podcast. Mm. A lot of stuff in there today. Yeah. Juicy stuff. Jam-packed. We driver lineups 2019. I know we did say we'd do some bloopers, um, but it's taken me a lot longer to, to find and go through all of Anything. our previous episodes to find the bits I've cut out or... To those, find something funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's short. It's about 35 seconds of yeah. me and you just hysterically laughing at nothing. 10 hours um, of just... About Monaco. Yeah. Uh, and some, yeah, just some random bits we pre-recorded that didn't make it to the cut. <laughs> that was just us talking shit. So... When do we get to hear that? When that you... will be out soon. Really? Not... You're going to make it its own podcast? Just a little blooper podcast? It'll be a blooper podcast. Yeah, yeah. right on. Yeah. I'll find, I'll find a little spot in the... In our calendar to... to Your mum's going to love it. A number one oh, listener. She will absolutely adore it. She's um, a big fan of everything on podcast. Huge fan. Yeah. and look Not at, as big as she used to be, though. No, she's gone off us a little no, bit. No, she's lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> Good on your mum. It's not because of this cooking, though. This no. is buttery. Mm. What your mother, Mrs. Mm. Luke, has come up with. What a spread. What is this? The weight that she's lost. I've put on. We've put on. Mm. We have pretty much put on the equivalent of what she's lost. <laughs> yep. um, and it's her cooking. She's just so generous with the butter. And the portions. And the portions. The not, portion sizes. It's not like one of those Michelin star restaurants where you get a $500 steak that's the size of a 50 cent coin. No, no, no. She goes the opposite. Mm. It's not quality. It costs 50 it's cents. Quantity. But yeah. It's quantity. It's massive mound massive. of carbohydrates. Chewy. Sugars, <laughs> butter. <laughs> buttery, sugary goodness. Which we've, is the Belgian way. The Belgian waffle way. We've got Belgian waffles over here. She's got a stack of pancakes. What's that over there? What's I, that? I don't know. I'm not sure what that is either. No. It doesn't look it edible. It looks like a waffle, but it's blue. Yeah, it's, it can't be right. Mm. Um, chocolates. We've got fries with mayonnaise. Very Belgian. Mm. Um, yeah, it's delicious. Let's hook in. It's really <laughs> yummy. Yeah. Thanks, Mrs. Luke. We love you. Thanks, Mum. What a sweetheart, your mum. She is. And, of course, uh, we're going to have a wrap-up of the... Going ones. through the bloopers yeah. and going through all of our previous episodes or yeah. the first half of the season, mm. um, how's your brother going? Is he can still masturbating? Yeah. <laughs> Feverishly? Feverishly. He's... It's good. He's a constant ice pack Keeps in his Keeps it consistent. Trouser. That's what I like. Yeah, no, That's no. Good. What did you think of that? Because that was in... Oh, I've, you I've been listening, listening to it all. To it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. I should bring that up and well, see how it's going. Guy really likes to masturbate. <laughs> In fact, 
I try not to, but I sometimes walk through the house with a blue light, one of those CSI blue lights. It's like <laughs> a Christmas tree. <laughs> Just like a Christmas. And you go, how did it get up there? Jeez. Jesus. Anyway, um, thanks for listening to us. FE1 podcast. Good uh, to be back. Great to be back, Luke. Enjoy the Belgian Grand Prix. Can't wait. We'll be back for the wrap up. And you can uh, get us at FE1 podcast Twitter. Hmm. And uh, say good day. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Um, we don't really care if you don't like it. It's all good. We still do no. it anyway. Yeah. We don't listen give a shit. Listen to the next one. It'll be yeah, better. Yeah, listen than to this. the next one. And then if that's not better, just listen to the next one and, and then that. it'll get better. And if that doesn't get better, we'll listen. Just keep just listening. Just keep listening and you might find something that you might like. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the season, if you don't like it, I still don't care. That's fine. It's all good. We'll still be here. Yeah. So come visit us when you like. We'll, we'll be here. <laughs> hey, Luke, great to see you again. Nice to see you too, Adam. Let's get into it. Uh-huh.